Hello and welcome to another episode on Diet Diaries with me Tanvi Savant and please welcome the nutritional expert Cheryl Alfonso. Hello Cheryl, welcome to the show. Hi Tanvi, thank you. Cheryl will agree to me uh, like when I say that being the feeling of being mother is virtually, you know, irreplaceable. Yeah, endless, right? Yes. So I happened to visit one of my friends who just delivered a child. So I just asked her, how does it feel to be a mother? And the way she explained her feelings, no, I, I, I would like to share it with you all. So when I asked her, she said that life just changes when you have a baby. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So and she told me that even though you're fearless, you're confident, you suddenly tend to uh, tend to become more scary. You know, you tend to just um, uh, get a little bit confused when it comes to your baby's you know protection and care. And the most life's most important thing for you becomes the baby's smile. True. Yeah. And. Uh, the second most important thing she told me is that when whenever when you become a mother newly so you have you have a kind of inner strength that builds up when from coming from nowhere and you go you like beyond all odds just to protect your baby and make it make her or him feel uh, you know feel happy safe yeah and happy yes. and safe and the most important thing is that the bond between your mother and meaning between the you mother and, and your child, mother yeah yes. and your and your mother and you tend to respect your mother more even more yeah True. <laughs> and it uh, all those things that your mother did for you now seems to be a huge thing for you yes yeah and ultimately the bottom line is that the bond between a mother and a child is one of the most unbreakable bond in the world yes. now coming back to nutrition <laughs> nutrition is extreme priority but when you are becoming a mother it is all the more important because um, research has shown that the diet of a mother uh, basically it influences a personal a person's health later on yes so is. in addition to you know giving your child that um, nutrition you also have to optimize uh, a good nutri nutrition optimizes the health of the mother as well mm -hmm. so that uh, she could deal with the demands of pregnancy so without wasting much time and without creating suspense for those mothers we'll get uh, we'll get back to the questions yes. so the first question is and whenever you spread the news or whenever you tell someone that uh, you are pregnant so the first thing that they say is now you have to eat for two people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So is yes. it correct to say that you have to eat for two people? No, that's something yes that everybody tells you, and it is a myth. I mean, you have to understand that the pregnant woman is an adult, but the life growing inside of her at the end of the uh, 240 days or 10 months of pregnancy, the 40 weeks of pregnancy, is only going to be a maximum of three or probably four kgs, or in extreme circumstances, five kgs. So where's the question of eating for two? Mm -hmm. How can you compare a 5 kg baby with an adult woman's weight of about 60 kgs which will increase to maybe 70 mm -hmm. kgs during pregnancy? So no, you're not eating for two. You're eating for yourself as a pregnant woman and you're eating for the developing fetus within your womb. Now if you look at it uh, nutritionally, when you talk about uh, nutritional intake, you're talking first and foremost about total caloric intake. That's the energy intake. So a pregnant woman's caloric intake is only in excess of 300 kilocalories over what her recommended uh, non-pregnant uh, compatriot is. Okay. So if I am a pregnant woman who starts off pregnancy at a weight of 60 kgs and till uh, this point of time I'm eating a diet which is about 1800 or 2000 calories, I only require to eat an additional 300 calories. So it's not eating for two. If I was eating for two, it would mean 2,000 plus, plus 2,000 calories. But no way. It's just an additional 300 calories that's recommended for uh, pregnancy. So you talked about uh, gaining of weight. So is it important to gain weight during pregnancy? Well, it is quite important to gain weight. And uh, you have to look at it from the point of view. Uh, you have to understand the reasons for which weight gain is happens during pregnancy. Uh, very importantly, there's an increase in the blood volume that happens okay, during pregnancy because uh, you require to now nourish a growing fetus within you. So blood supply has to increase because that's the medium of passing nutrients and oxygen to your little one who's inside there, right? So that's why blood volume will increase. You will have placenta which is growing to support the growth of the baby within. Okay, You will have an increase in the uterus. You will have an uh, increase in mammary glands because you are also anticipating the period of lactation which comes mm -hmm. post-pregnancy for feeding your baby. So there's an increase in uh, mammary gland or breast tissue that, uh, that happens. And all of this together is what is your uh, pregnancy weight increase. So generally we suggest um, 
anywhere between 9 and 12 kgs which is healthy weight gain during pregnancy but i've had friends who've been lucky enough i would say to probably just gain about 5 kgs during the whole uh, 40 weeks of pregnancy with no adverse outcome to the child or to the mother yeah so you also have to remember that when you talk about weight gain during pregnancy you're talking about eating an additional food which is being supplied to your baby inside mm -hmm. and probably supporting also and definitely supporting the growth of all other tissues within the mother's body to support the growth of the fetus yeah so 5 kgs is also an acceptable weight gain that will happen 12 kgs is Uh, what is the maximum yes. i would say that is expected during pregnancy you have ladies gaining more than that and i would say that's a little unhealthy okay so what are the different food groups you immediately have to incorporate once you know that you're pregnant protein is very very important because protein is uh, what helps in the growth of cells a developing fetus is nothing else but cells that are mm -hmm. increasing at a rapid pace so you require protein nourishment for the fetus as well as for the mother because of the increase in uh, mammary gland tissue and everything else Uh, you require uh, fats essential fatty acids very important for the development of the brain of again the developing fetus and a lot of micronutrients among the micronutrients calcium is important for uh, the bone development in skeletal development mm -hmm. of the fetus and to maintain the bone health of the mother so an increase in uh, calcium requirements for the mother and increase in iron requirements in order to have optimal hemoglobin levels for de, uh, for delivering oxygen and nutrients to the fetus uh you have folic acids b vitamins very very important for the pregnant woman folic acid most important again and a whole lot of other micronutrients like zinc and selenium which also uh, is recommended for the mother so you said that all the food groups are important so what are the different uh, carbohydrates that uh, you recommend for a mother is it different from the normal food not really not really but uh, yeah a little bit uh, you would have to emphasize co complex carbohydrates carbohydrates is the source of energy for mm -hmm. any adult for the mother yes uh, adequate amounts of carbohydrate but a stress on complex carbohydrates and by complex carbohydrates i mean any food that has a lot of dietary fiber in it during pregnancy because of the increasing uh, size of the uterus it sort of pushes down upon the bladder and you may have uh, problems of constipation that can mm -hmm. happen okay on the uh, on the rectum also you can have problems of constipation that will happen in the pregnant woman and that is why it's very important to have regular bowel movements so there is um, you're not exerting unnecessary pressure while uh, passing a stool and that's where dietary fiber or complex carbohydrates come in so what are the different protein sources that you recommend proteins for a mother for a vegetarian mother pulses dals nuts very important source beans very important uh, and economical sources of protein for the vegetarian mother dairy products of course mm -hmm. um for the non vegetarian mother of course all your flesh foods like uh, fish meats poultry all of this good sources of protein in the diet of women So is it recommended that having oils fats and ghee especially they you know they usually tell the pregnant you should have a lot of ghee so yeah. is it is it a part of the healthy diet yes uh, you know to my knowledge this thing about ghee and i've heard a lot of people recommending that pregnant women have it in anticipation for delivery because they say that uh, the more ghee you have the delivery the natural uh, childbirth vaginal birth becomes much easier and smoother now how much truth there is in that i really don't know but uh, ghee the uh, the the ghee that you get the animal ghee mm -hmm. yeah the natural ghee that is there is quite nutritious like i said you also have to you can't just keep walloping and increasing the amount of fat in your diet but you need to definitely eat foods that have essential fatty acids in them okay. ghee has some amount of an essential fatty acid coming as it is from an animal source that is uh, milk so uh, yes that can be used uh, for cooking or for other purposes in the kitchen okay while cooking meals for a pregnant woman but apart from that i would recommend stressing on omega 3 fatty acids omega 3 fatty acids you can get them from fish for uh, all those who are non vegetarian for those who are vegetarian options like walnuts almonds flax seeds these are good sources of omega 3 fatty acids so this is essential for a pregnant woman uh, polyunsaturated fats again very essential for the pregnant woman so choosing your oils poly and mono unsaturated fats uh, would again be very essential for them so um 
not really over emphasizing ghee mm -hmm. yeah uh, but a combination of your ghee as well as your other unsaturated fats is essential okay uh, so what uh, portions of fruits and vegetables then you should balance them both right? so how, how you recommend portions of fruits and vegetables would go up during pregnancy for one reason because of the increased requirements for all the micronutrients that's mm -hmm. your vitamins and the minerals which are abundant in uh, fruits and vegetables and for the second reason that fruits and vegetables especially when they're eaten in the raw form have a lot of dietary fiber in them which deals with many other issues of pregnancy like constipation etc so uh, for a non-pregnant adult, you generally would suggest a combination of about three servings. Mm -hmm. But for a pregnant woman, I would suggest at least go up by, by one more portion, so between four and five portions. And when we talk about portions, fruits, it's simple. One fruit is equivalent to one portion, or one portion is one fruit. So one apple, one orange, uh, one medium-sized banana, yeah, that's recommendations. For vegetables, if you're looking at portions, you're talking in terms of the household measures and for India, we talk about it in terms of vatis or katoris. Mm -hmm. So the medium sized vati or katori, that's equivalent to one portion. So a recommendation of three portions of vegetables, two portions of fruits in total through the day is what I would suggest for all pregnant women. Okay, we'll part for a short break here, Shadi. Yeah. We'll be right back after a short break. Keep watching Diet Diaries. Welcome after the break. We were talking about the nutrition for pregnant women. So Cheryl, we have discussed a lot. Now, um, I want to tell us that what are the mineral and vitamin supplements? They usually recommend the, uh, them to pregnant women. So Generally, yes. Generally, calcium, iron and folic acid. These are the three supplements that are most often recommended by gynecologists. And there's a reason for doing that. Uh, although as nutritionists, we would like to stress that, you know, you get all of these nutrients in a natural form. But these are the three nutrients whose recommendations also, just like energy and protein, mm -hmm. increases during the period of pregnancy. If you are not following a really healthy diet, uh, it can affect the pregnant woman as well as the fetus very, very adversely. And uh, unfortunately, folic acid is a very important supplement because Folic acid is required for the development of the neural tube in uh, the fetus. And the neural tube is your brain and the spinal column. So if, this, if these, uh, these are not properly enclosed during the first few weeks of pregnancy, a child can be born with neural tube defects, which is very sad. And folic acid is the main nutri uh, nutrient which is required for the closure of all these, uh, of the neural tube basically. And that's why, that's why the first thing that is always uh, told to any woman who is either planning a pregnancy or is aware that she may be pregnant is to get to your gynecologist immediately and ensure that you start off on supplementation because unfortunately our diets uh, mm -hmm. folic acid is a vitamin that's generally found in a lot of green leafy vegetables and, and yeah. you know, <laughs> we're allergic you know to them. yes we are allergic totally allergic to green leafy vegetables and that's why the concern that maybe the diets may be deficient in uh, folic acid that's why that's one supplementation that goes without saying that every pregnant woman should take iron and calcium of course you can get it from your diet but calcium required for fetal development skeletal development and like i said to protect the the skeleton of the mother because you must remember that the child will derive nutrition at the expense the fetus will derive nutrition at the expense of the mother so if mother's calcium status is not good if her protein status is not good she will be depleted of all these nutrients mm -hmm. just so that her fetus can grow normally and be delivered normally so at the end of the nine months or ten months of pregnancy you've got a really malnourished mother although okay. you may have a good enough child who's born yeah and that's why these supplements are suggested at every stage of pregnancy so what are the different uh, now water is ultimately important yes so what are the different other options for hydration hydration uh, for the pregnant woman is extremely important one because of the problem of constipation you can be eating fiber but if there's not enough of water again you can get constipated yeah so that's one reason to meet the demands of the increasing blood volume to keep your blood thin for proper flow of nutrients to the fetus you require a good amount of hydration in the mother so uh, instead of plain water any any liquids mm -hmm. uh, like juices is something that can be recommended to mothers milk lassi buttermilk these are beverages that would best suit a pregnant lady um, caffeine 
I would not really recommend any of these uh, carbonated beverages, mm -hmm. definitely not because of the high phosphoric acid in them and because of the other preservatives and additives in them. Caffeine uh, in the form of tea and coffee, again, don't overdo the consumption of that because these are drugs, okay, mm -hmm. and can cross the barrier, uh, the fetal barrier also and may, we're not really very sure but it could have negative implications on the child. So keep that to, don't don't go off tea and coffee mm -hmm. totally but restrict yourself to one or two cups, two cups per day but don't make that your source of hydration. So your juices, whether it is fruit juices, vegetable juices, uh, dairy beverages mm -hmm. and uh, plain simple water, best for the mother and of course tender coconut water. Uh, so once the mother starts eating all those things which you have told, she ultimately gains weight. Yes. And there are certain uh, certain ladies who gain weight at an extra faster rate. Yes. So is it uh, recommended that they go on a crash diet or never, something? Never, never, no. never. No, not, not a crash diet. But if you feel that um, as a woman or if your doctor feels that you are gaining weight too rapidly, look at the reasons for which it's happening. One could be because you're eating in excess of what is required. Like we said at the beginning of the mm. episode, everybody tells you eat for eat, two, yeah. eat for two and splatters the butter and the ghee on all your foods. Not really required. Okay, like I said, you just require an additional 300 calories. And uh, let me explain what 300 calories is. 300 calories is like eating probably just an additional five chapatis. Okay. That, that, you know, it's that little an amount or probably eating just another additional four or five fruits. So it's not that big a mm -hmm. quantity, 300 kilocalories. So if you found that you're putting on weight too rapidly, look at the reasons for which it's happening. Go to a dietitian, get your diet streamlined, but don't go onto the internet and find weight loss diets mm -hmm. or you know crash diets as such because you're going to harm yourself and more importantly, you're going to harm your fetus. So you talked about the various um, you know the dis discomforts that uh, usually the pregnant women face. With the joy, there are certain, you know, always, all yes. the sad it's things, all yeah. the symptoms, <laughs> yes. the symptoms of pregnancy. Yes. yes, and the first and foremost is the swelling of the feet. So, the, can it be controlled by proper diet? Uh, it, you have to look at the medical reasons for which feet will swell because uh, there can be a problem of uh, hypertension during pregnancy. You may start off pregnancy never having high blood pressure, but unfortunately, through the course of pregnancy, your pressure can go up. Okay. So that can be one very important reason for which your feet begin to swell in the earlier uh, weeks of pregnancy. So rule that out, of course your gynac will always help you out with that to figure out why your feet are swelling. But if it is because of hypertension, you require medical intervention, you require dietary intervention also. If it's uh, towards the later stages like the 8th month of pregnancy or so, you will find swelling of feet naturally happens pooling of liquid basically at the extremities because of the pressure mm. on your lower body. Uh, so keeping your feet elevated, ensuring that you drink adequate amount of water, these are ways of dealing with edema that may happen during pregnancy. And I've seen cases wherein uh, if a non-diabetic lady turns into a diabetic, which is uh, I think called as gestational, gestational diabetes. diabetes. Yes. So how how you recommend, how do you control sugar levels in that case? Yes, again, uh, generally at the third month of pregnancy, in the end of the first trimester of pregnancy, that's when most gynacs will advise you to go for a blood sugar test mm -hmm. to find out uh, whether you have the possibility of gestational diabetes, like hypertension, like I explained. Mm -hmm you have pregnancy induced hypertension so it's only for the period of pregnancy that your pressure goes up okay. similarly gestational diabetes only during the period of, uh, of uh, pregnancy yes. that you are termed a diabetic now one way of possibly uh, getting to know that uh, that you're figuring out whether you have gestational diabetes is increased weight gain mm -hmm. so you may feel you're not eating too much and still the weight's going up check your blood sugar levels Gestational diabetes has to be managed with the help of your gynac. Diet, yes. Increased fibers, spacing of your meals, very, very important. Cutting down on simple sugars, cutting down on fats in your diet would be recommended to deal with gestational diabetes. Okay, uh, there's one more thing is the heartburn. Is it uh, one kind of a uh, no, complication? It is definitely a complication. What is heartburn is just a feeling of uh, you know acidity that mm. rises and that's again because of your growing belly which is pushing mm. up onto your organs above. yeah, And that's forcing probably the food up. How do you deal with heartburn? Eat smaller portions of food. 
So instead of eating four or five or six meals a day, maybe as a pregnant woman, you would have to be eating probably eight or even 10 meals. So smaller quantities every two hours is what is suggested to deal with heartburn. Eat slowly. Mm -hmm. um, don't lie down immediately after you have eaten a meal. Walk around a little bit. Exercise is very, very important during pregnancy mm -hmm. for keeping your weight under control, for keeping uh, your blood circulating very well, for keeping yourself healthy, for increasing your oxygen intake. Exercise really helps during pregnancy. So all of this will also help uh, in, in heartburn, walking around a little bit and eating smaller portions of food. This is an interesting question. Uh, ladies, you know, we really crave for certain kind of food. So why is this craving, first of all? We really don't know why it happens, okay. but uh, <laughs> yes, pickles, pickles uh, foods, chocolates, <laughs> chocolates. I don't know whether it's an excuse that because you're pregnant, okay, come on, let's just eat this all. But maybe there are some connections in the brain that is causing you to just crave for these mm. things. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you plan you know, uh, your meals during uh, your pregnancy period? Uh, generally, you will find that uh, women in the, uh, the pregnant woman, they find it difficult to eat first thing in the morning. Most mm. of them, they complain of a morning sickness. So for them, I would suggest always uh, getting up in the morning, don't rush to the kitchen and you know, try to cook food or get breakfast ready for people around you. Just take it very easy. Snack on some biscuits or some toast, have a cup of black coffee if that suits you fine. Drink a little water, sip on it slowly and uh, that, that's initial. Then wait for a little period of time, probably an hour or so before you get down to actually having your breakfast. And from then on, every three hours, try to munch on something. Nuts, sandwiches, juices, whole fruits, vegetables, sprouts, uh, lettuce, broccoli that is steamed. All of these are important uh, uh, foods that, should, that a pregnant woman should be eating. Don't forget the three main meals, that's your breakfast, lunch and dinner, definitely should be had and probably two or three snacks in between each of this and bedtime, have something bedtime also at bedtime also. Okay, so actually we have a lot of things to ask you but time is not permitting <laughs> us. Yes, yeah, so can you give us the tip of the day, Sharon? Enjoy pregnancy, mm -hmm. don't look at it as a burden. Be aware that there is a growing um, a growing life within you and you're responsible for that okay it's a pleasure to be responsible for something before you can actually see it so give it the best of nutrition in terms of eating healthy if you're not if you're a little unsure about what you need to be eating ask your doctor make an appointment with your dietitian with any uh, nutritionist in the area and make sure that you're eating at the right time and in healthy portions and don't forget the supplements that your doctor would advise you to have. Don't take them for granted. Thank you for the information, Sheryl. Okay, after this, I think the next topic should be on your postpartum uh, nutrition, that yes. is after your delivery. Yes. yes, so yes, for the next nine months, you'll be growing rounder and wider, <laughs> but ultimately, after your child, uh, you know, after your child comes in the, into this world, you'll be happy forever. So you have to take care, you have to eat properly here, and, uh, what else you can say? And exercise, don't forget yes. to exercise. Yes, that's something I uh, tell all pregnant women because they're scared of exercising, but exercising, walking even 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Swimming is excellent, in fact, for pregnant Swimming. women. Yes, oh. yeah. So it, it, it's healthy and um, it gets you a healthy, uh, a more active baby, I would think, any sort of an activity. So don't shy away from exercising during pregnancy. Okay, so congratulations to all the ladies who have embraced the motherhood. So you people take care because you have a little angel who is totally dependent on you. So we'll see you in the next, in the next episode. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.